What about Norway's World War II army? Norway had a small army when the Germans invaded the country in April 1940. But what about this army? In this video, you're going to learn about the Norwegian army of World War II. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, my name is Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher and I make videos about history for you. And if you find it interesting, well, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. Norway separated from Sweden in 1905. Norway was a sparsely populated country with not that many resources and no naval tradition. The country adopted a territorial army concept using trained reservists to fill the ranks. Norwegian divisions were infantry formations with a staff, two or three infantry regiments, and either an artillery regiment or a mountain artillery battalion. They had no armor or anti-tank weapons because of their own rugged terrain. Infantry regiments had 3,750 men and were supported by machine gun battalions. Horse mounted cavalry regiments or bicycle ski scout companies were used for reconnaissance. Howitzers were horse drawn. On the 8th of April 1940, one day before the German invasion, the Norwegian army had 25,000 men, which in case of full mobilization could be expanded to 118,500 men. The army commander was Major General Christian Lake, on the 11th of April replaced by Otto Ruge. There were basically two uniforms when 1940 came around, the M1914 and the M1934. The M1914 was a woolen greenish mountain grey uniform and had red piping. It had a fly front and therefore the buttons were not visible. Here you see the officer tunic. In 1934 a new uniform was introduced. This light grey uniform had visible buttons. Both tunics had their grey coat variant. When 1940 came around, some soldiers even wore the obsolete M1894 tunic which was dark blue. Sometimes soldiers or officers wore regulation or privately purchased civilian wind jackets over their tunics. The soldiers wore pipe trousers with black leather ankle boots. Ski leggings were introduced in 1934. Officers could wear breeches with long leather boots. Ranks of officers were displayed on the collar. For the rank and file soldier there was the M1914 Finnmark winter cap with ear flaps secured on top and a national cockade. Officers wore cappy with a black peak leather straps and two cockades, one with the Norwegian line and axe motif. As for helmets, in 1940 the Norwegian army had two types of helmets. The first one was adopted in 1916 during the First World War and was the British M1915 Brody helmet. The second one was adopted in the interwar period, the Swedish M1931 Baltic helmet. In 1935 the Norwegian line badge on a metal disc was added to all steel helmets. Enlisted men had a brown belt with two leather ammunition pouches. These had supporting straps. Furthermore, the men had the usual equipment like water bottle, bread bag, gas mask bag and rucksack. Enlisted men had the M1894 Krak Jurgensen rifle. This weapon was designed by gunsmith Erik Jurgensen and officer Ole Hermann Johannes Krak in the late 19th century. Interesting enough is that not only Norway used this weapon, but also Sweden, Denmark and the United States. A unique feature of the Krak Jurgensen rifle was its magazine. While many other rifles of the time made use of an integral box magazine loaded by a charger or stripper clip, the magazine of the Krak Jurgensen could be topped up without opening the rifle's bolt. The service rifle was provided with a bayonet. There was also the M1922 Matson light machine gun. This weapon came from Denmark and was adopted by and named after Colonel Wilhelm Hermann Olof Matson, the Danish Minister of War. As for heavy machine guns, the Norwegian army made use of the American M29, which replaced the Hotchkiss M1914 machine gun. And officers they carried the so-called Kongsberg Colt. Pistol. Norway managed to stay neutral during the First World War, but this was not to be when the Second World War came around. On the 9th of April 1940, Germany invaded both Denmark and Norway. Operation Wisserubon 
had started. 2,000 German troops had already embarked on 10 destroyers ready to sail north when the order was given. At Bergen, Christiansand, Trondheim as well as Narvik, German troops came ashore during the early hours of April 9th. Without much resistance, the Germans captured the coastal places. At Narvik, the local commander was a supporter of the Norwegian fascist Vidgun Quisling, who would later head the collaborationist government. Speaking of which, Quisling announced a new government via the radio, initially backed by the Germans, but it had no popular support. At Oslo, the Norwegian coastal guns managed to sink the German heavy cruiser Blücher. As German parachute troops landed at Oslo, the Norwegian government left the capital to a place 70 miles north. Allied troops, British, French and Free Polish landed at several places, Harstad, Samsos and Andalusnes, and mauled the German navy at Narvik. The Germans now began to expand from their bridgeheads. Some Norwegians surrendered and others fled to neutral Sweden. A problem for the Norwegian defenders was that apart from the fact that they weren't fully mobilized and were inadequately equipped, was also that many of their gun depots were now in German controlled territory. And the Allied troops weren't in their best shape either, since their best units were located in France, waiting for the impending German attack. Orders changed almost hourly and there was a lack of maps, transport, radios and other necessary equipment. The Germans had air superiority, which wasn't always available due to the weather conditions. But when the weather was favorable, the German planes bombed the Allied positions mercilessly. The Germans advanced from the south and pushed back the Norwegian British forces. And since the Allies also didn't attack German positions at Trondheim, they also broke out from there. A few days before the end of April, the Allies decided to abandon central Norway, which also had to do with the foreboding German invasion of the west. In the north at Narvik, the Allies had more success. Soon King Hakon arrived in the north of Norway together with his government. Towards the end of May, when the German invasion of the West was well on its way, the Allies also decided to abandon Narvik. On the 7th of June, the king left the country. Norwegian commander Ruge remained at the side of his men and was captured by the Germans. On the 10th, Ruge signed the capitulation of the Norwegian forces. The Scandinavian minerals and iron ore route to Sweden was secured and the Norwegian campaign was over. All in all, the only reason why the Norwegian army managed to hold out for so long was due to the fact that they were assisted by the Allies. But given the poor shape these allied troops were in, this only postponed the inevitable. I read that around 25,000 Norwegians escaped to form the free Norwegian forces overseas. Some of these took part in the liberation of Finnmark, but that is a story for another time. Thanks to my good friend Jorin, who went to a history museum in Norway and took some of the pictures that I used for this video. If you like to learn about Norwegians that volunteered in the Waffen-SS to form the Norwegian Legion, you can click right here. And if you want to learn about another often forgotten World War II Allied Army, the Dutch Army of 1940, you can click right here. I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Support me on Patreon if you can. And until next time.